Hello, and welcome to IHASCO's first quarterly vlog of 2020. We have planned to record it in our studio, but with everyone working from home now, we decided to do something a bit different. We have several segments this time. We've got a stress awareness Q&A with Lottie Galvin. We have a behind the scenes on our new Slips, Trips and Falls version two course with Matt Newport, a care certificate 15 course roundup with Mike Brooks, who was the lead videographer. Uh, we also have a Q&A with three of our newest employees to find out a bit more about them. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to start with Lottie Galvin and her stress awareness Q&A. Good morning, darling. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Looking stunning today. Thank you. So are you. <laughs> As always. So I've got five questions for you. The first okay. one being, mm -hmm. I want to become better at spotting signs of stress in my staff. What are some of the most common signs of stress in the workplace? Okay. Uh, well, I guess it's important to remember that with stress, it affects your emotions, your behaviour and your body. So the most obvious kind of signs you'd notice from someone else, you know, if they're being particularly irritated or anxious or angry or even teary, or they could even be withdrawn. You might find that they're snapping when they normally wouldn't, you know, like um, biting back when someone makes a small critique. You'd also notice things like headaches, dizziness. You can become a magnet for cough and cold when you're stressed. If you're like prone to like like flare ups such as skin breakouts or eczema, that kind of thing, you know, it can often flare up problems like that as well. So especially if you're, you know, close friends with certain people at work, you might notice certain changes like that. Um, are there any free stress awareness resources available that I can share with my staff? Yes, we actually have a few on our website. They're attached to our stress awareness of course as well. And we also have this really cool thing that um, our production crew made. It's a video of a, I think it's a hexagon. So all it is, is it's just this really basic shape on screen that literally expands and then collapses. And the idea is you can kind of download it or put it on your desktop. And when you're feeling stressed, you open it up and you just breathe in and out in time to the shape expanding and collapsing. And it's so cool. super stress relieving. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I didn't know that. It's like it's like um, a breathing exercise, isn't it? Like meditation. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, does stress affect productivity? Big time. Um, it's probably one of the biggest productivity killers out there. And what some people don't realise as well, actually, it's not just like oh, being overloaded with work or emotional strain or whatever that causes stress. It's actually the opposite as well. It's having nothing to do or being bored or feeling, you know, anything that would challenge your kind of self-worth or motivation can make you really unproductive. If you entertain the idea for a minute that humans are like balloons, Right. So imagine a balloon with no air in it at all. It's just it's on the ground. It's doing nothing. It's not moving. It's really unmotivated. Start putting a bit of air in it, a.k.a. applying a little bit of healthy pressure. It's productive. It's motivated, challenged, having fun. And then you end up in this kind of peak performance position where the balloon is nice and well rounded. If you keep putting more and more air in it, this balloon is going to be getting too big and it's going to it's going to burst. And the fact yeah. is that when you're like that at work, you're going to be unfocused, you're going to be confused, you're going to be forgetful and stressed. So it does make you unproductive. What can I do to help other staff that are stressed? There are very simple little things that you can do day to day that make a huge difference. Put a cup of tea on someone's desk if they look like they're overrun, you know, walk up to them or send them a quick message and say, I'm a little worried about you. Are you OK? Do you want to chat? Um, you could even offer to take a task off of their plate if you know they've got a long to do list. You've got, you know, there should be support systems in place at work, you know, like we have with us. So mental health first aiders, if they're in the organisation, are literally trained to spot signs, to know how to approach staff and signpost them for help. But if you really think, you know, it would work, just ask that person how you're doing. And if they need to take five minutes away from their desk to chat, you know, it does a lot. Yeah, a little goes a long way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What are your best stress busters? Well, first of all, that tool I just mentioned, super, super useful. Certainly any kind of breathing techniques, um, which includes meditations. I use the Headspace app. Yeah. And what I love about Headspace more than anything is they simplify it so much. You know, they've actually got some on there that are only a minute long. So you can go to the toilet, you can go to your car, you could even put a screensaver on your computer at work 
put your headphones in and listen to a one minute body scan meditation and just feel all of that cortisol just ebb away and taking yourself out of the situation is a good one as well so if you're in the environment you know you're in the room that's causing you stress step out of it for two minutes stress feeds stress but calm feeds calm do your best not to feed the stress and um let yourself unwind Thanks, Lottie, for taking the time to answer our questions on stress awareness. Next up, we have Matt with a behind the scenes look at slips, trips and falls. Hi, I'm Matt, senior creative here at iHasco, and today I'm just going to be showing you a behind the scenes process to slip, trips and falls version two. So the challenging thing for this one, both script wise and visually, was to create something that highlighted the importance of this training, but to produce it in an entertaining format. So I think we got this spot on, it was a great script from James, and then just using a mixture of different animation styles and footage, and we used a professional stuntman too, which was an iHasco first. So I'm going to focus on showing you more of this uh, retro style of animation here. Um, the idea behind it being we're sort of taking the out of ourselves in a way. We all know these safety videos have been around for a very long time, and up until iHasco, uh, the large majority are boring, poor quality, patronising, so it felt like this was a nice little asset to try and help bring engagement up. So let's just show you a little bit here. And so it sort of starts with this storyboard phase here and then it's, you know, developing the character. So if we go into here, uh, we've got one of our keyframes here, um, drew this one in Illustrator, and it's just a case of doing the in-betweens. So to describe what that is, here's one keyframe, here's another, this is the in-between. Um, so we've done that with all the pieces here. And once that's done, it's a case of cleaning it up. This is good for getting the animation right, but it's not a very good drawing tool. So if we go into Illustrator here, you can see where they've all been cleaned up. And this gives me my raw drawings to then put into After Effects where I'm going to animate it. But before we do that, I needed to draw a background, which I'll just show you quickly here, using a mixture of references to, you know, get this 1950s sort of style right. So let's go into After Effects. Here we can see it all together. Something I didn't show you actually was the uh, little walk cycle. I cheated with that. All it is is three little frames here, put it on a loop, and there we go, it looks like he's walking. So we've got our nice little style here. It looks great, but it still doesn't look very 1950s. It's quite colourful. You know, we want to take some of the colour out and put it on a film projector. So let's come back to here, and here we go. This is everything composited in, and we're almost there. It's just getting the sound effects and music right. So to do that, I put a sound effect on the presenter that made it sound more, you know, retro, and then some 1950s music and a little vinyl cutter. I'll just play that for you now. To help avoid slips, trips and falls, it's important that you have the right response to hazards. You have a legal duty to play your part in keeping everyone safe, as well as a duty to report hazards to your employer. And there we go. That's behind the scenes briefly for Slip, Trips and Falls version 2. Thank you, Matt, for the insight into the production of Slip, Trips and Falls. It's easy to forget quite how much work goes into the creative process. And now we have a segment from James Kelly, one of our script writers, given the retrospective on GDPR. Just over two years ago, I was tasked with researching and writing IHASCO's GDPR course. The months leading up to the release of the course and the regulation itself was a chaotic time, to say the least. People were genuinely worried that this huge piece of legislation was going to completely change the way they operated as an organisation, and often for the worse. Today, I've been given an opportunity to reflect back on that time and some of the events that have happened since. It's been two years since the GDPR was first introduced across the EU, and though there were early fears of crippling administrative costs and an endless campaign of inquisitions by the ICO, who were waiting for any opportunity to levy heavy-handed fines, they are for many organisations nothing more than a distant memory. In fact, of the 22,181 data breaches reported since the regulation was introduced, the ICO has issued the grand total of one fine, hardly the multitude of multi-million pound penalties predicted two years ago. The fine itself was issued back in December 2019 
to a London-based pharmacy who were fined £275,000 for what was described as their careless storage of over 500,000 documents containing sensitive health information. The ICO issued the company with an enforcement notice, which gave the pharmacy three months to make drastic changes or face further fines. Among the requirements of the notice was the need to provide mandatory data protection training to all their staff. Under the GDPR, employers are required to provide their staff with training on data protection and basic cybersecurity. And this, to me, is really the crucial point of the GDPR and one of its best achievements. On the one hand, by training their staff, employers are fulfilling their duty and complying with the regulation, helping themselves avoid potentially reputation-damaging court cases and huge fines. But more importantly, the regulation has served to increase the population's general awareness and understanding of the risks we all face, both inside and outside of work whether from fraudsters and scam artists, or from negligent and non-compliant organisations operating without a care for their data security and well-being. The GDPR has taught us all the value of our data and given us the means to keep it safe. That's all from me. Good night. Thank you, James Kelly, for that segment on GDPR. And now we're going to move on to a sit-down with Mike Brooks, who was the lead videographer for the 15 Care Certificate courses. You know, Mike, you're IHASCO's lead videographer and how many hours of work do you think we'll put into the care stigma courses overall? <laughs> it's ended up being a, an eight-month monster of a course. You've got 15 uh, courses to script. You've got the storyboarding before you can do anything. Then you've got the organising of the actors and the locations. And you've got the filming days themselves. And that just gives you the raw material to actually create the videos. But then they get double-checked in their final format on the online courses. Uh, but we do that as a team, so there's nine people looking at it, checking it, seeing if it all gels together. And if it doesn't, then you, you go back and you make amends and you uh, get ready for the next course. It, it is such a huge project, these 15 courses. It's just beyond anything that IHASCO has tried before. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so you, obviously, 15 different courses, there must have been lots of different locations that you used um uh, to film in and um, so how many how many different locations were there and, and how did you how did you choose them well um there were, there were more than 10 um and they, they were very disparate uh, some were in the ihasco office but then we used two other office units uh, so we weren't repeating the same backgrounds but there was a tennis club thrown in doubled as a care home there was staff houses cares and lottie gave up their own front rooms to be filmed in. But there was a real care home. That was a that was a really good thing. We actually got to film the real deal, as it were. Um, there was a community center. But they're all chosen to uh, represent the, um, the huge variety of experience of our user base. There, there isn't any point in showing it all in a, uh, in a hospital or, or just a school. We have so many people that we need to talk to, and there's no point in them switching off to when they see that it isn't relevant to them, because the points we're getting across are very important. They, they need to uh, reflect people's real experience. And so similarly, the actors, there must have been a uh, quite a diverse range of actors as well then. And how many were used to, to kind of get the footage we wanted? Yeah, I mean, this is a difficult question because we, we, we did it step by step and course by course, but I was looking at the numbers and we had 25 um, wow. professional actors and that didn't count the 40 extras. We roped in family and friends and by Hasco employees to be in the I think I was there somewhere, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it was, it was just um, to show the reality of it. So, so much of the standards of cares are based around people dealing respectfully with other people. And you just, you, you can't convey that kind of information in flowcharts or infographics or, or, or even animation. To actually see somebody do it right you have to see a person and see them engaging with, with another person and doing it uh, properly. With something of such a monumental size, 15 courses, 10 different locations, 40 extras alone, plus all the other actors, um, what was the biggest challenge during production? Um, the juggling, of uh, to, to, Yeah, just if an actor turns up late or they're in the wrong costume, you lose a day of filming. If, if the set isn't dressed correctly, the audience will spend its time um, looking at the blooper in the background rather than actually listening to what they need to listen to, to the important things that are being conveyed. So, yeah, it's, it's just juggling, just trying to make sure everything's there at the time to get it in front of the camera 
uh, so that the the animators get a chance to have a flying start and actually add things to that and actually make it even more memorable than just film footage. To get all of that footage, um, what, did you try any kind of new recording methods or techniques during the production process? Um, yeah, yes, we, we were lucky enough to, um, uh, to, to invest in uh, a dolly setup and a gimbal um, device. And it, it, all it does is mean that you don't have to keep the camera locked. You can free it up, you can get in amongst the actors, you can make much more natural form of storytelling. It adds another form of engagement to, to the whole uh, production. So to finish, what was your personal favourite part of the production across all 15 courses? Working with the actors was, was fabulous because you start off the day with a drawing, a storyboard of what you want to show. But every single person who helped us with the project, who came in and gave their time, all added their own experience. They all chimed that, oh, yeah, when my grandma was ill, it happened like this. Oh, I remember that. Or when I was um, had to have a carer come in because I broke my leg, it was like this. And he wasn't very good at that. Or, oh, yeah, he really saw how to do that. Everybody all the actors we worked with were just adding to the, the skimpy little drawing you draw down as a storyboard and making it real and actually reflect what they had experienced from the care community. That, that, was, that was fabulous. I, I suppose the second bit to that um, was filming the course was um, actually visiting a, a, a real care home mm -hmm. and see, seeing the reality of a, a truly caring, supportive home. So much of the uh, headlines are when it goes wrong and when it, it isn't done properly and people fall through the cat gaps or but actually getting to see when it works and when people do what they love and help people it was it was a fabulous day filming that thank you for your time lead videographer michael brooks thanks for taking the time to sit down with mike and explain just how much work goes into a project as large as the care certificate up next, we have a few Q&As with some of IHASCO's most recent additions. Morning, Ed. How are we? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. I'm very well. I'm very well, thank you. Are you ready for some of your questions today? Go on. Let's go. Let's, let's fire them away. <laughs> OK. You have said that you're a big fan of live events. Can you give us a couple of your favourites? This year, I was going to go to quite a few. Um, sporting events, music events, for example, the Euros I was going to go to this year, and Wimbledon. Music events, things like Boomtown, things like that. I'm into everything from Chemical Brothers to Kanye West. It's different genres from house to disco to techno. You name it, I like it. Where in the world have you travelled? I lived in Melbourne for a year. I was a ski instructor in Canada and I travelled South America for six months before I went to Australia as well. So quite a few places. I've been very lucky. You just said that you were a ski instructor. What led you to do that? I was at school. I've been in sixth form and been through my A-levels and been through GCSEs and didn't have a break. And I didn't really want to go to university straight away. So I just decided let's get a pair of skis on and go and live in Canada for six months. Uh, and where was your favourite place? I'd probably say Brazil. They know how to have a good time. They, they, they have a good life. They have fun. They live life to the full and they've always got a <laughs> smile on their face. Love that. OK. And how are you enjoying IHASCO? It's really good. I mean, I joined at the perfect time. I just joined in December when you have about 50 million parties. So that's uh, <laughs> always a good time to join a company. And everybody's a good laugh and the team's amazing. And we found that out, especially when we've heard it, been all working from home. I mean, everybody's been there for everybody. And you can just see how much the team is, really. And it's yeah. one big family. Absolutely. 100% agree. Well, thank you for asking all my questions today. That's it. No You're worries. Done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hello, James. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Can I ask you some questions? Uh, yeah, you can. You've mentioned your passion for travel. What are your top three destinations? I really enjoy Thailand. Amazing place. Um, also Barcelona is one of my top destinations. 
I really enjoy all the friendly people and the drinks. <laughs> and Yellowstone is the other one, I guess. Yeah. Amazing nature. I mean, it's a massive valley of awesomeness. So what got you into web development? Well, I, I did enjoy designing things and make them work. So, you know, you, you have a big impact on people that are using these pages or applications that you create. So I really enjoy making them easy, not, not accessible for everyone, I guess. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think that's probably the same reason I'm in it, to be honest. So you mentioned playing board games in your spare time. Are you playing any at the moment? Well, I always play Zombicide. Mm -hmm. It's like a game that's always going, you know, going on. And I really enjoy Takenoko, if I pronounce it correctly. It's, uh, I think it's Japanese. I'm not sure if you ever played, but it's, you have to grow bamboo and then maintain your garden. And on the same time, you have to feed the pandas with the bamboo that you grow. Might so, have to try that one. I've not heard of it. Yeah, whoever grows the most bamboo and also keep their, their panda fed wins. It's, it's amazing. Um, so you mentioned your favorite film was The Pianist. Do you have any isolation recommendations for films? Well, when you say that, I mean, you expect heavy movies after my, <laughs> my mention on The Pianist. As yes. I, I, I really like Parasite. I'm not sure if, uh, if it's... Uh, isolation movie <laughs> memories of uh, murder i think it's korean it's an amazing uh, detective story i think it's a true story actually let's have a look i love parasite yeah it was very good so finally how are you enjoying ihasco uh, i really enjoy ihasco <laughs> uh no yeah i really enjoy working for ihasco so everyone was very friendly from uh, from the first day, and that made me, like, you know, feel that I belong to the team from day one. Um, also, I really like the fact that you can work in uh, lots of cool projects uh, used by so many people and learn new technologies. Great. Well, thank you very much for answering those questions. <laughs> You're welcome. See you soon. To see you. Morning, Crystal. Morning, girl. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Not too bad. Just trying to adjust to working from home. But yeah, I know. All good. Thank you. Well, we miss you. I miss, miss you, you too. <laughs> um, so I've got a few questions. The first one is: You've mentioned before that you're very passionate about food. What's your favourite dish? Yes, too many. Um, I'm going to have to narrow it down to actually. I'm going to say a starter, a main and a dessert. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll go with that. Um, starter has to be calamari. Um, for main, stop between chicken and steak. Um, okay. But for dessert, pavlova. Oh, pavlova, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Where in the world have you travelled? I've been to quite a few places, actually, um, ranging from like, Egypt, Miami, um, Amsterdam, I'm um, trying to think where I went to recently. I went to Malta in January, nice. um, which was lovely. So, yeah, I definitely plan to go back there soon. Oh, very nice. Which one was your favourite? Oh, this is going to be quite biased. Um, I have to say Grenada, which is where I'm originally from. Um, so it's in the Caribbean, small island, love the culture, the vibe. And, yeah. It's just oh, nice. I didn't know that about you. I didn't know you were from Jamaica. Oh, did you not? No, that's yeah. amazing. I love that. <laughs> Good. Um, you said before that you wanted to do lots of different jobs before. How did you decide to join IHASCO? Right. Um, so I was actually on Indeed, um, just having a look at different positions, um, similar to what I was doing before. Um, and it came up um, from the jump. There was a really good vibe. Um, so, yeah, the interview, the initial contact was really good. So, And how are you enjoying IHASCO? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I do love it. Yes. Um, so from down to the product um, that we provide, it's a really good product. Um, also down to the staff as well. Everyone's very welcoming and um, the whole culture and atmosphere. And it's nice to work for a growing company that 
actually genuinely care about their stuff. Oh, that's lovely. I love that. That's so cute. It's like the best answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. You're all done. They're all your questions. Okay, cool. You've gone through them with flying colours. Was it worth doing all your makeup for it? It definitely was. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there we have it. That's the end of our first uh, 2020 quarterly vlog. Just like to thank everyone for being a part of it and thank you for watching. Um, today we had Sylvie. Thanks to Mike. Thanks to James Kelly. Thanks to Loco. Thanks to Matt. Thanks to Millie. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>